Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Ang nandito na naman tayo para sa ating disciplines and ideas in the social sciences. And for today's lesson, we are going to talk about some key concepts and ideas of the Filipino thinkers in the social sciences rooted in the Filipino languages and experiences. And here's your milk. Examine the key concepts and ideas of the Filipino thinkers in the social sciences rooted in the Filipino languages and experiences uh, during 19th century and 20th yes, to 21st century. And the our objectives today are explain the significance of using a particular language for discourse. Identify some key concepts in the social sciences rooted in the Filipino languages and experiences. Draw a comic strip based on the indigenous concepts. And lastly, show an understanding of the role of interpersonal relations in the Filipino culture. And here for your review, pwede kayo mag-review nito with your teacher and your subject teacher. But for us in our classes, uh, we will be talking about human development, a uh, human uh, environment systems. So now let's start with some important thinkers of the revolutionary period. Take note, uh, ang mga taong babanggitin dito ay mga taong nagmalaki, may malaki contribution sa ating Philippine culture and the history during the time of the revolutionary period or panahon ito ng mga Kastila sa ating bansa. Our first one is Jose Rizal. He is the most influential figure of the Philippine revolutionary period. And it was during his stay in Europe that he penned two of his most important works, the Nolimi Tangere and El Filibusterismo. The two are fictional works which were based on the social issues that Filipinos were experiencing during that period. Ano ano to? These are inequality, racism, colonialism, among others. He claimed that the form of revolution that the Philippines needed to go through is that of intellectual revolution, such that every Filipino should be educated well on the concepts and exercise of freedom. And it can only be attained by educating the masses about the truth. At ano ang truth na yun? That is based on science and rational thinking and not from the morality-based education provided by the church. Uh, the second one is Andres Bonifacio. He is the founder of the revolutionary society called Katipunan. Uh, when Spanish authorities discovered the Katipunan, the society already had some 30,000 members in a period of six months only. Three days after the founding of the La Liga Filipina, Rizal was banished to Dapitan in Mindanao, nasa southern part ito ng Pilipinas. Bonifacio being the member of the Liga, he thought that he it was the end of the line and he that's the reason why he founded the Katipunan. And according to Bonifacio, a man's worth is not measured by his stations in life, neither by the height of his nose, nor the fairness of skin, and certainly not by whether he is a priest claiming to be God's deputy. Even if he is the tribesman from the hills and speaks only his own tongue, a, ma a man an, uh, is honorable man if he possesses good character is true to his word, fine perceptions, and is loyal to his native land. Next one is Apollinario Mabini. He became well known in Philippine history as the sublime paralytic. Kasi maaalala ninyo, hindi siya makalakad because of his sickness or nagkasakit siya ng polio. And another one, he is the brain of the revolution. He was born to an illiterate farmer and market vendor with seven other children in Tanawan, Batangas. He had no initial economic and social capital that would have secured him good education. So he was able to receive scholarships and part-time jobs, uh, jobs teaching children, which allowed him to complete a Bachelor of Arts degree at Colegio de San Juan de Litran and a Bachelor of Laws at UST. 
Another struggle he overcame was his paralysis. In, in 1895, he was struck with polio and lost the capacity of his lower limbs. During such time, he had started writing his most influential works, El Verdadero Decalogo and Ordinanza de la Revolución. Take note, hindi naging hadlang sa kanya ang kanyang kapansanan para maging isang may silpi sa lipunan. According to him, humans are naturally good. It is from this stand that he argues for the concepts of freedom being a, a byproduct of people's exercises of goodness. He said, true liberty is only for what is good and never for what is evil. It is always in, in accordance with reason and the upright and, uh, and, uh, and honest conscience of the individual. He also distinguished reason as the key element in the citizen's participation in political life. It is also the same element that he should guide revolutions beca because without reason, such movement will be mere futile, if not disastrous for the society. This is clearly synonymous to Rizal's call of reliance on the truth. Another one is Emilio Jacinto. He is popularly referred to as the brain of the Katipunan due to his significant contributions to the Katipunan, primarily the Cartilia of the Katipunan. And his article was published in Kalayaan. He became Andres Bonifacio's advisor and secretary. While Jacinto died at the young age of 23 because of malaria, he, rema he remained as one of the most recognized heroes from the revolutionary period due to his lit literary works that guide guided the Katipunan. The Cartilia, which became the source of values of the revolutionaries, exemplified core values like that of charity, piety, honor, and equality. The concept of uh, charity were linked to with the performance of care for others that is void of self-interest. Uh, piety, according to Jacinto, is the practice of charity wherein a true pious individual would extend support to others and conduct himself or herself with fairness. Uh, finally, Jacinto promoted the concept of equality in three aspects, race, gender, and social status. He, urged, he argued that any person, whatever his social class, gender, or skin color, should be treated fairly. Dapat lahat pantay-pantay. He highlighted the importance of women in the process of building a strong society. Kahit babae ka man, you have, uh, uh, you actually have a significance to the society. Uh, the capacity of the underprivileged to contribute to social development and the irrelevance of one's race in his or her capacity to be a good citizen. Next up is Manuel L. Quezon. So, for, pardon me with the spelling. Manuel Quezon was elected as the Commonwealth President in 1935. He now buttressed his political ideas with some educational and social thought. He believed in social Darwinism. What is it? According to social Darwinism, the governments are product of political struggles for survival. So, hindi talaga may iwasan ang kamalian sa society. So, according to him, his political uh, philosophy consists of two strands. One, political pragmatism. Two, political preparation for an eventual Philippine independence. Political pragmatism is the principle which says that one must fight for a goal. But if obstacles towards that goal are difficult to surmount, then one must fall back to an alternative that is better 
then nothing provided it is in the right direction. He also believed in justice for all, a social justice that would allow the working class to receive decent compensation to enjoy culture and leisure. His social justice program included higher wages, credit facilities that would allow the Filipinos the opportunity to earn a decent livelihood, and the protection of the rights of women and the poor, among others. According to him, there can be no progress except under the auspices of peace. Without peace and public order, it will be impossible to promote education, improve the condition of the masses, protect the poor and ignorant against exploitation, and otherwise ensure the enjoyment of life, liberty, and poverty. Property. So now let's move on to some Filipino thinkers after the revolutionary period. Who are they? One is Isabelo de los Reyes. Uh, he is referred to by many historians as the father of Filipino socialism due to his writing on anti-Catholicism and labor unions. He was one of the founders of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente or the Philippine Independent Church or mas kilala natin ngayon na Aglipayan Church which is an independent Christian Protestant church. Bakit? Kasi sila yung... Uh, pumuna sa mga turo ng mga, kato, ng mga Espanyol sa Pilipinas. Uh, de los Reyes exhibited immense talent at a young age, having won a silver medal for his work El Folklore Filipino, or the Filipino Folklore, at the Exposición in Madrid. He founded the first labor union in the country, ano yon? The Union Obrera Democrática. Another one is Camilo Osias. Uh, he de advocated that the educational system must contribute towards the achievement of the goals of education by inculcating in the mind and hearts of the youth the value of preserving the patrimony of the country, promoting the general, general welfare of the people. So, education ang kanyang gusto. He believes that education must secure for every Filipino the, fo the fullest measure of efficiency, freedom, and happiness. Osea said that the school has an important role in the, in the dynamic nationalism and internationalism in relation to democracy and education of the youth. High educational institutions should do more to turn out graduates who can think logically, scientifically, and creatively. He also further said that our education should instill love for work, spirit of tolerance, respect for law, love for peace, and practice thrift. So kung mapapansin niyo yung kanyang focus is more on education. Another one is Claro M. Recto. He became known as the foremost uh, statesman of his generation due to the various nationalistic writings that he made as a senator. So, naging senador siya ng Pilipinas. Recto became known for his advocacy of highlighting Filipino nationalism as opposed to the colonial backdrop that most people were embracing. He was often heard and read advocating the Filipino First Policy, where he claimed that our country's development will depend on the context, in the extent by which our country and its interests would be prioritized before those of other countries, especially our former colonial masters. So in the First Filipino Policy, kumaga unahin muna ang, ang kailangan ng ating bansa. Unahin muna ang kapakanan ng ating bansa before other countries. Kasama na dito siguro yung uh, unang pagtangkilik na mga gawa, gawa ng ating bansa before other countries' products. So for Recto, a true free government is that which is capable of making economics and social decisions for its citizens without placing at its primary consideration the interest of other governments. Okay, another one is Virgilio Enriquez. So, look at the picture. Napaka-pogi niya, no? 
So, let's continue. He is considered as the father of psychology and Filipino or the Filipino psychology. Uh, Filipino psych uh, psychology and Filipinos, the scientific study derived from the experience, ideas, and cultural uh, orientation of the Filipinos. So, uh, scientific study derived the, uh, from the experience, ideas, and culture of the Filipino. Uh, psychology and Filipino or indigenous Filipino prod, uh, psychology is also known as Kapwa psychology. Kapwa psychology draws from folk practices as much as from modern theory. It perceives no contradiction between indigenous folk beliefs and more psychological concepts and scientific norms. So, tingnan natin yung diagram. Sinasabi that the heart of the psikoloy ang Pilipino is the kapwa. Pansin ninyo ang kapwa. So, nakapaligid sa kanya yung accommodative values, pivotal interpersonal value, confrontative values, and linking social personal values. So, i-discuss natin yan sa mga susunod na slides. The core values or kapwa, togetherness, togetherness. The concept of kapwa is the core of psikolohiyang psikolohi Pilipino and the heart of the, the structure of the Filipino values. Pakikipagkapwa means treating the other person as kapwa or fellow human being. There are two categories of kapwa, ibang tao, hindi ibang tao. Under ibang tao or outsider, yung pakikitungo, pakisalamuha, pakikilahok, pakikibagay, pakikisama. So, number two, ang kabilang doon is pakikipagkalagayang loob, pakikisangkot, pakikipagkaisa. Some examples of the Filipino values. Hospitality. I know you are all familiar with this. The friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, and or strangers. Isa nga, naaalala ko kapag may mga bisita sa ating bahay, pinaghahandaan natin sila. That's a sign of being hospitable. Uh, utang na loob or debt of gratitude. Bahala na. This is fatalism or determination of and being risk taker. Bahala na ang Diyos. God will take care of us. Being raised, uh, tayo mga Pinoy, mahilig sa pagiging risk taker. Lalong-lalo na kung tayo ay nasa madali ang uh, pagdedesisyon. Lagi natin sinasabi itong bahala na. Diba? Pivotal interpersonal value. Another significant Filipino value is that of pakikiramdam, which is considered as the pivotal in interpersonal value. Within this value, Filipino use their inner perception of the other's emotion in order to efficiently interact with them. So, kung mayroon kang pakiramdam, you, can, you will understand the feeling of the other person. Diba? Pag hindi ta, kapag, sabi, kapag sinasabi nga nila, wala ka bang pakiramdam, that means you are manhit. Diba? So, linking social personal values. Another value that contributes to our practice sa pagkapwa is that of kagandahang loob in which he, this value shows an act of charity towards others. So, mayroon kang magandang kalooban. You are willing to help. You are, you are always ready to lend a hand. So, that's kagandahang loob. The practice of bayanihan or community-based action entails the participation of the community on a task that is meant to improve the quality of life and livelihood of the members of the locality. Various terms from different locality used to refer to bayanihan. Uh, kung mayroon kayong ibang term ng bayanihan sa inyong mga lugar, then that's still the same. Like for example, Pintakase in Samar. Kapanyidungan in Batanes, Iklos in Leyte, Bataresan in Southern Tagalog. Marami pang iba na mga terms dyan. So, under accommodative, uh, accommodative surface values are the bayanihan or any form of kagandahang loob is, is always framed within another set of Filipino values which are la labeled as accommodative surface values. These values include hiya, utang na loob, pakikisama. And under confrontative values naman, 
these are values that our Filipino exhibited especially when confronted by difficult situations. Tulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, kung nasa panahon ka na ng kagipitan or nasa panahon na madalian na ang kinagawa mo, we always do this, we always do this na pahala na. Pahala na, kung papasa, papasa. Kung hindi, hindi. Di ba? Ganun tayo. <coughs> Lakas ng loob and pakikibaka. Uh, some societal values are So according to Enriquez, Filipinos uh, also hold societal values which he called pagpapahalagang pandipuno. So ito yung pakir, ito yung uh, values na may concern tayo sa ating society or lipunan. Uh, these values inclu- include karangalan or honor, katarungan or justice, kalayaan, freedom, which are essential to the preservation of the Filipino societal order. and harmony. Moreover, these values shape a psychological unity among Filipino communities as they build a common perception of moral obligation to others, to other members of the community who are considered as kapwa. Uh, so next up is uh, Zeus A. Salazar. So, Zeus Salazar was one of the Filipino scholars who were trained and whose methods were derived from the West. And he argued for a shift in perspective. He developed his lifelong crusade for a nationalist brand of history that became a staple perspective for the next generation of history students. That is the Pantayong Pananaw, from the word tayo. So our perception, diba? So, key arguments of the Pantayong Pananaw. The primary argument of the Pantayong Pananaw is the need of reorienting the contemporary historian on the right way of reconstructing the past based on who is talking for whom, with whom, and to whom. According to Salazar, there are three perspectives by which Philippine history was was and is being written. The Pantayo the pang kami, and then lastly, the pang tayo. Unahin natin yung pang kayo, pang kayong pananaw. This perspective is used by Western historians who use their own cultural background and their ten- country's political economic agenda in framing the events that transpired in our country. So this perspective is used by foreigners or outsiders in thinking about or referencing a particular culture. its people and its customs. So to translate, the British would, sh- would say, you Filipinos are different from us in many aspects. So kayo mga Pilipino ay iba sa amin sa maraming bagay. So that's pang kayo. Okay? Mula sa pananaw ng mga outsiders. Ang outsiders dito, yung mga foreigners. The pang kaming pananaw is... Uh, this is a perspective launched at works on the Philippine made by Filipinos for Western consumption. So take note, Philippine uh, Philippine made for Philippi- uh, by Philippine made by Filipinos for Western consumption. So it is used when a native talk outsiders or foreigners regarding his or her own society and culture. One's own, langu- one's own language may not or may be used. The main goal of the Pangkaming Pananaw is to correct the er- erroneous Western analysis of the Philippine context. Siyempre, sino makakapag-correct kung di tayo mga Pilipino lamang? And lastly, ito na yung sinasabi ni Enriquez, the Pantayong Pananaw or Tayo, from us for us. The Philippine history should be written and consumed primarily by Filipinos and to achieve this goal is a key element needs to be addressed. The use of the Filipino language in transmitting knowledge. So, kung atin, dapat it should be written in our language. Huh? Salazar states that a community, society, or culture can claim to have pantayong pananaw only if, it, if all its members use concepts and manifest habits and behaviors whose meanings can be understood by all. Like when we say, we Filipinos, or tayo mga Pilipino, including the relationship between the meanings. This is made possible 
with the existence of a language which is the basis and channel of understanding and knowledge. So, some local language for discourse. According to Salazar, Philippine history should be written in a local language or dialect for two important reasons. The local terms, we, when transposed to Western language, lose their actual meanings and historical significance. Like, for example, if you are talking about the history, if you are writing a history of the uh, of the Warainon, it should be written in Waray. Because uh, if you will translate it into English, nawawala na ng meaning and significance. So, yun ang ibig sabihin ni Salazar dito. Uh, number two, our history should be discussed among ourselves and not for the others. The use of local language characterizes the pantay panana. So, if you are using your own language or dialect, that signifies that you are in the pantay panana na. Salazar urged the Filipino nation to have a talastasang bayan that is oriented toward discussion of the Philippine history for the Filipinos and by the Filipinos. So, ini-encourage siya na magkaroon ng talastasang bayan para ma-preserve yung Filipino culture and the Philippine history. So, doon nagtatapos ang ating discussion sa module na, na ito. So, now if you have questions or comments, please, if you are watching this uh, video or discussion, do not forget to Write your comments sa section sa comment section ng aking channel. And if you are my students, we can talk about your questions in our class. Okay? So, para sa mga estudyante ko, abangan ninyo ang lesson uh, at mga quizzes doon sa ating Google Classroom. Okay? And lagi naman ako nag a sa ating group chat for you to keep updated. Okay? So, once again, maraming salamat sa panunood at pakikinig ng aking video discussion para sa linggong ito. So, abangan natin ang ating uh, video discussions for next week. Okay? Bye everyone!